Hey guys, thank you for joining us tonight. We're really excited to have you for our summer series. Uh, Richard will be speaking to us tonight about church, and uh, we're looking forward to what he has to share with us from God's Word. Hope you have a great night. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, we are so excited that you decided to join us tonight for our Zoom fam group meeting. Uh, once again, our, our theme has been redefine, and we've been looking at how the world has actually taken meanings that God put in place and given their own definition to them. Uh, but what we're trying to do in this, in this summer series is taking those definitions back from the world and redefining things, uh, redefining things the way that God meant them to be. And this might seem surprising to you, but one of the things that the world seems to have redefined is actually a word that we find a lot in the Bible, church. Uh, so tonight we're going to be looking at what was God's original purpose of the church? How do we define church? Many of you may have seen uh, a simple song or even sung it yourselves when you were little, and, and it goes like this. Here is the church. Well, here is the church. Here is the steeple. Open the door. And what do you say? There's all the people. Yep. Uh, that, that's something that a lot of us have been taught since we were little, but, but actually when you look in Scripture, when you look in the Bible, church isn't defined as a building. This isn't the church. You see... Actually, this is. Uh, if it makes more sense, it would be, here is a building, here is its steeple, open the door, and there's the church. Uh, now, now, that may not sound as pretty, that may have even been funny to you, but in all honesty, guys, when we look at Scripture, that's how God defines the church. You see, the Greek word for church was ecclesia. And ecclesia was sort of used to describe a political party in the Greek society in that day and time. Uh, for instance... Uh, they would have said that these people were the assembly or the group of people that followed Caesar. And that assembly would have been called the Ecclesia, which Paul and other New Testament authors take to, take to redefine and, and to use it for the followers or the political party of Christ. You see, when we hear the word church, our first instinct shouldn't be building, it should be the people. Now, in our society, you, you might also hear a lot today about people saying, well, I believe in God, I love God, but I don't feel like I actually have to go to church. I don't feel like I have to go there. I don't feel like I have to be there. And you see, this also is a wrong definition of how the Bible describes church. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take that definition, the Bible's definition of church, we're going to compare it to the world and just see what God's purpose was for the church. What is the church? Why did he create it? Why should we be a part of it? Uh, we'll, we'll explore all these things. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, when I say, what is your purpose? Uh, you might think of a lot of different things. You might think of something that you enjoy. You might think of uh, what you do at school, what sport you play, uh, anything else. But but the Bible actually gives Christians their most important purpose. In Matthew chapter 22, Christ gives us the greatest commandments. There's just two of them. The first one is to love God with all of our heart, soul, and mind. And the second one is to love others, to love them as ourselves. And you see, the church, if it's just a group of Christians, if it's a group of followers of Christ, the church's purpose should be the same as a Christian's purpose because the church... Are, is made up of Christians. Uh, so when we talk about the church, the purposes, the two main purposes of the church are to love God and to love other people. But how do we do that? How is it different to do that in an assembly versus to do it just by ourselves? Well, let, well let's look at that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, you can turn there real quickly if you want. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Bible talks about the church as the body of Christ. And I want you to think about what a body does. You see, if Christ is the head, uh, the head is thinking of everything, it's determining what everything does, but the body is what's doing a lot of the practical work. And today, the churches uh, of Christ have been given 
the role of being the body of Christ. So Christ may determine what we're supposed to do, but the body is acting out those things on earth. You see, you might be a hand, you might be a foot, you might be a spleen or something else weird, uh, but you are if you are a Christian, are a part of the body of Christ. You're a part of the church. So you're not called to simply love God and to love others, but to do it in a way that includes other people. Because like 1 Corinthians 12 said, if the body is just a hand, well, that doesn't really make sense. If it's just an elbow, if it's just a foot, that doesn't make sense. You're meant to be part of a greater body. Now, when we look into the New Testament, we also see a lot of ways that the church functioned uh, under its two purposes of loving God and loving other people. And we see five things that the church did, five things that made it super important to be a part of that really impacted Christians' lives. And, and we're going to explore those. We're going to look at those for a little bit, and then we'll give you guys some time to discuss them in your fame groups. The first thing that we see throughout scripture is worship. John chapter 4, uh, Jesus tells the Samaritan woman that we're called to worship in spirit and in truth. Now when it comes to truth, that means worshiping in, in a way that's pleasing to God. You see, God has a true way to worship, a way that we're meant to worship. If you turn to the book of 1 Corinthians, especially if you look around chapter 14, you can learn a lot about true ways to worship. But then also you're supposed to worship in spirit. Interestingly enough, one of the things that God calls out the Israelite people in the Old Testament most on is having an insincere heart when they worship. And when we hear worship in spirit, what we're supposed to think is when we come together to worship, we're called to come together and mean it. We're not supposed to sit there and just sing these songs while thinking about the boy or the girl that's sitting next to me that I wanted to date one day while, while sitting there thinking about, wow, Mike Winkler has something really weird crawling up the side like some little bug or something. Uh, we're, we're not supposed to think about all these different things. We're supposed to have our focus on God, and that's what in spirit means. So when it comes to worship as a church, we're called to worship in spirit and in truth. And what's the purpose of that? Well, it helps us to remember what God's done. It helps us to glorify Him. It helps us to just fall a little bit deeper in love with Him, guys. God created us and gave us salvation. When we worship Him, we're honoring that, we're remembering that, and we're rejoicing in that. And God craves that. It's us expressing our love for Him. So one of the purposes within the other two purposes of the church is to worship. Now in Acts chapter 2, you can turn there, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, we actually find three other purposes for the church. So let's go ahead and read that. Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved." See, I think we learned three important truths about things that the church is supposed to do in this passage. First, we learn about fellowship. What is fellowship? Well, it's fellows getting together. It's a group of people meeting together, hanging out, enjoying being around one another. But specifically, it's a group of Christians doing that when it comes to the church. You see, the Bible talks a lot about that we become more like who those we are around. And when we're fellowshipping and encouraging one another and pushing those around us to grow closer to Christ and, and just having a loving attitude, that can increase uh, our spirituality, our love for God, um, and our love for other people. Fellowship is an integral part, a very important part of the church. Another thing we learn here is about discipleship. It says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. And essentially what that meant was 
they devoted themselves to God's laws. They became greater uh, at, at, by being more humble. Uh, they became people who were willing to follow God's word, who were willing to really dig in and to love God's word and to get closer to him, to become more mature, uh, to become more like Christ himself. Discipleship was a huge part. Another huge part that we see in Acts chapter 2 is ministry. It says that they were selling their possessions and they were giving to one another. Uh, they were not uh, saying, I'm going to get what's mine. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take that. It was more of, well, acting like Christ, like being the body of Christ. It, it was about giving. It was about loving others. It was about devoting yourselves to helping others before yourself. Finally, in Matthew chapter 28, we learn about a fifth purpose for the church, and that's a mission. And specifically here, it's the mission of evangelism. In Matthew chapter 28, well, you guys all know it, Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20, we learn about the Great Commission, that we're supposed to go into all the world, teaching Christ, baptizing people, helping them to become Christians. As the church, as the body of Christ, we have that same calling with one another. We're called to go out in our, our communities, into the world, and to love people, and to push them to love God. Now again, like I said before, let's just to reemphasize, let's see how these five things fit into the greatest two commandments. So we have worship over here, that's thing one. Worship deals with loving God, doesn't it? It deals with rejoicing in Him, it deals with uh, giving our devotion to Him, it deals with us just saying, God, thank you so much for all that you've done for us, we love you. Second is fellowship. Fellowship deals with loving others, loving people who are around you, and with loving God. Christ himself said, if you love me, you will love others. Uh, Christ is the one who displayed uh, how to be a disciple of God, how to be a follower of God, and one of the biggest aspects of that was to love other people. Fellowship actually deals with both. We get to discipleship. Uh, helping other people to love God more and to love other people more, to become more mature Christians. deals with both. We look at ministry. Ministry deals with uh, ministering to other people, helping other people, serving other people. Uh, that deals very specifically with the second commandment, to love others. And then finally, mission. Uh, evangelism. Going out into this world deals with getting others to love God and and loving God ourselves to, to believe that what he's done for us is important enough to share. Worship, fellowship, discipleship, ministry, mission, those are all huge purposes within the church, and those are great, and they are honestly the reasons to be part of the church. The world has corrupted the world the word church sometimes. It's made it into a building. It's made it into a thing that doesn't really matter, that's not really important to our faith. But guys, when we look at Scripture, when we look at the Bible, the church is so important. It matters so much. Uh, it, it specifically, uh, and in a way that nothing else can, allows us to love God and to love other people in a way that's incredibly important. Finally, uh, I think when, when we think of church, one of the things that it does that we don't often think about is it gives us a little taste of heaven. What is heaven? It's going to be a bunch of Christians that get together and be with Christ one day. And that's what the church is. The church is literally a little piece of heaven on earth. Guys, I, I am, I am, I've been so excited for this series. Uh, I can't wait for us to discuss the purpose of the church. Uh, and honestly, right now, I think it's a good, a really good time to look at how we define church. You see, uh, a lot of people, or to a lot of people, it seems that church is just a social club. It seems that the only purpose of church is to plan us mission trips to go on and to plan uh, VBS and Rainbow Mega and all these other things. And those are some activities the church has done in the past. But guys, right now, because those things aren't taking place, the purpose of the church has not changed. We're still called to love God, to love other people, and to do it through our worship, through our fellowship, through our discipleship, through our ministry, and through our mission of evangelism. 
let's discuss tonight uh, how we as a body of believers can truly redefine church for ourselves and for the world, and specifically in this time, how we can live out the church's purpose. Have a good time.